الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى we're going to study together some of the benefits from the science of the Quran from the science of the Quran as you know and it is not hidden from you that the Quran is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in a way that befits his majesty. And that's why the scholars of Islam, when they define the word Quran in the linguistic sense, like in terms of the language, the language here means the language of the Arabs. Not any language, yeah, the language of the Arabs. Because the Quran was revealed in their, in their tongue. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu Qur'anan Arabiyan. We have sent it down, that means this Qur'an, in Arabic tongue. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was the most eloquent when it comes to the Arabic language. And he was the best of Quraysh, because Quraysh was the most eloquent of all tribes of Arabia. So the Quran was revealed in the Arabic language. In the linguistic sense, the Quran comes from the word Qara'a. Qara'a. And Qara'a is to recite. Yaqra'u قراءة قرأ يقرأ قراءة القراءة is recital المصدر so you say قرأ يقرأ قراءة or قرأ يقرأ قرآنا so this is in the linguistic sense can the word Qur'an be conjugated. Can you conjugate the Qur'an? I want to see what you say. Can you conjugate the word Qur'an? Wa alaykum salam wa Can it be conjugated? Conjugate like, okay, we learned when I, when I was learning English from the British years ago, and the conjugation is like when you say, I eat, he eats, she eats, we eat. This is called conjugation. Okay? It's called conjugation. Tayyib, can we do this with the Quran? No. Correct. Quran cannot be conjugated. Like Ramadan. Can you, can you conjugate Ramadan? You cannot. Okay. Now the word Quran. Ramadan, Injil, Taurat, it cannot be conjugated, okay? So this is very important because the scholars have mentioned this as well. Tayyib. Now after this, we're going to go to the legislative meaning of the Qur'an. According to the Kitab wa Sunnah, the word Qur'an, the scholars of Al-Sunnah, they define it to be Kalamullah. So what are we going to do? We're going to break it down. And I want you to interact with me. طيب. كلام الله, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, when we say the speech of Allah, this excludes the speech of human, the speech of the angels, and the speech of other creatures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. So it is a unique speech, the speech that befits his majesty. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks. Now I, I want to ask you, can you give me an ayah from the Quran? Where Allah mentioned that he speaks. Give me an ayah in the Quran. Where Allah mentioned that he speaks. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Qul. Say, O Muhammad. No, I want an ayah which says Allah himself speaks. Because qul say. Okay, where's, what's the ayah in the Quran? Where Allah, he mentioned that he speaks. 
Okay, I'm gonna give you one to open up. Tabal. Ayat al Kursi. But Allah did not he did, he did not mention that he speaks there. Is there any uh, uh, anything in the, in the Ayat al Kursi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he speaks? Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum. La ta'akhuduhu sinatun wa la nawm. Okay? Allah is the one. There is no deity worthy of worship except him. No, no, uh, no sleep or slumber overtakes him. So there is no mention of that he speaks. Farid, you want to give it a shot? No? Brother Abdullah? Naam. Wa kallam Allahu Musa taklima. Remember this. It's very important when someone asks you a question, you always hit the target. You always hit the target. Because you may give an ayah, yeah, yeah, the Quran, all of it is good. But that ayah may not be correct in that particular context. You see? So it ha you have to hit the target. You have to say the ayah that fits that situation. You understand? Okay, Tayyip. Allah said, wa kallam Allah, wait. وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَىٰ تَكْلِيمًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. So here Allah mentioned that he spoke to Musa. So Allah speaks in a way that befits his majesty. Yes. So like in the Quran, uh, Allah, Allah is talking to the angels to make Adam. Very good. Jazakallah khair. That's a good point. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ وَإِذْ قَالَ And when, you, when your Lord said, this is a speech, he spoke to the angels. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, you, you're good. Alhamdulillah. Tabar. نَعَمْ وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ وَدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord said, call upon me and I will respond to your dua. Jazakallah khair. Any, any, anything else? نعم وإن أحد من المشركين استجارك فأجره حتى يسمع كلام الله. If one of the مشركين comes to you, O Muhammad, for protection, give him shelter until he hears what كلام الله, the speech of Allah. طيب تفضل. Yes. Yes. Correct. Correct. Yes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Iblis. So that shows you right there that Allah speaks in a way that befits his majesty. Tayyip. So now, the ulama after that, they said the Quran is the speech of Allah, ghayru makhluq, uncreated. Why, why would they say uncreated? Why? I, I, I want brother to, to give me an answer. Just, you know, don't feel, you know, shy, embarrassed, anything like that. Alhamdulillah, we are sitting here to learn, all of us. Um, why would the scholars say uncreated? Why? They could have said, the Quran is the speech of Allah, and they move on. Why do they have to specifically mention uncreated? Why? Why would they say uncreated? Not created. No, Al-Quran, al for example, the throne of Allah, is it created or not? The throne of Allah. Al-Arsh, is it created or not? Yes, yes it is created. The uh, Al-Jannah wa nar Hellfire and Paradise, are they created? Yes. They're created by Allah. Okay, Al-Quran is the speech of Allah. They said Al-Quran is the speech of Allah, not created. Why would they say not created? No, but the question is, why would they say the Quran is not created? It's not like the throne of Allah, paradise, and hellfire, human beings are created, angels are created, the earth is created. But why the Quran would not be created? Why? You didn't get it. 
That's okay. Alhamdulillah. Tafadhal. Allah has revealed that when the word speech comes directly from that. Yes. Correct. Because the speech of Allah is part of his essence. Do you understand? It's part of his essence. Okay, I'll give you an example. Your name? Sayyid. Okay. And I am talking the brother Sayyid right now. Okay, now your speech when you talk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And then you say good morning and good evening and the like. This is your speech, right? Is it created or not? No, your speech. Is it created or not? No, but my, my question is, is your speech created or not? Okay, forget about the speech. Your hands, are they created or not? So it means that you are created too. Huh? By Allah. That's what I'm saying. So if your hands are created, it means your whole body is created by Allah. Right or wrong? So your speech would, all, would also be created. Very good. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is Allah created? Was Allah created? No. What is the proof and evidence? Can anybody give me a proof and evidence from the Quran? It's a very small surah in the Quran. Very small ayah of the Quran. Ayat of the Quran. Okay, what is, what is the ayah? Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum. Yes, hayyu al qayyum, the everlasting. So Allah doesn't have a beginning and doesn't have an end. You understand? And Allah said in the Quran, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدٌ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٌ You see? He was, not, he was not born, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does not befit his majesty. He did not, he did not beget, yes. Naam. Naam. Ahsant. So, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not created, his attribute will not be created. You understand? And the speech of Allah is from his attribute. طيب. Now, and he said, حقيقةً 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 it means that Allah spoke uh, in literal form. You understand? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke with a, with a sound. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He spoke with a sound and letters. Al harf, the salt, with letters and sound. Now, when the scholars said the Quran is the speech of Allah and it is not created, who are they refuting here? Who are they refuting? Mu'tazila and who else? Al Jahmiyyah. And who else? Yes, al al mushabbiha al mushabbiha And who else? al ashaira So I want you now to participate in this. I want you to tell me what is the madhab of al jahmiya when it comes to the Quran. al jahmiya What is their belief in the Quran? What do they say about the Quran? Yeah, we Ahl al-Sunnah, we say the Quran is the speech of Allah. Very good. What about al-Mu'tazila? What do they believe? Anybody knows al-Mu'tazila? Mu'tazila, what do they believe? They have the same belief as al-Jahmiya. Okay? All right, al-Ashaira, what is their belief in the Quran? Anybody knows? Al-Ashaira. What's their belief? Remember the statement of Yusuf Estes. What did Yusuf Estes say about the Quran? 
What did he say? Now, what Yusuf Estes said, this is the belief of the Ashair and the Kullabiya also. Kullabiya and Ashairah, they have very similar, you know, belief in regards to the book of Allah, the Quran. Remember, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they say the Quran is the speech of Allah and created. Because it is part of his essence, it cannot be created. Right? And it is part of his knowledge, it cannot be created. Because the knowledge of Allah is not created because the speech can or can be a command. Allah commands us or prohibition or the like. So it is part of his knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It cannot be created. Now, al-Asha'ira, they say al-Mus'haf, what is in the Mus'haf is not Quran. But it is an expression of the Qur'an. عِبَارَ عَنْ كَلَامِ اللَّهِ It is like a representation of the speech of Allah. That's why Yusuf Estes, he said it's like paper money. Ah, paper money. What is he trying to do? He's trying to tell you that this paper money doesn't have any value. Of course, you cannot vandalize it, he said that, because you get in trouble with the law. Okay, now, if you take it to the bank, you can cash it, right or wrong? You can cash it. So the value is not in the paper, it's in the cash. But that paper just represents the money. So what he's trying to tell you, that al-mushaf, he's using philosophy and ilm al-kalam, the rhetoric. So he's saying that al-mushaf, what is the mushaf? Is ibara an kalam Allah. It's an expression and a representation of the speech of Allah, but it is not the speech of Allah. He said, actually, the speech of Allah is the recital and what's in the preserved copy. And what made things worse for him? His ignorance about the Arabic language. So what he said, he said, Allah said, Dalik al-Kitab, and he didn't say Had al-Kitab. Okay, Dalik al-Kitab. What's the difference between Had al-Kitab and Dalik al-Kitab? Anybody can tell me? What's the difference between Dalika and Hada in Arabic language? Dalika and Hada. Anybody knows? Anybody knows Dalika and Hada? Yes. Okay. In the Arabic language, Hada lil Qareeb wa Dalika lil Ba'id. Okay? Now, when you speak about something close, okay, in. in uh, Masculine gender. You say, هَذَا رَجُلٌ This is a man. Okay? So, someone over there, we say, ذَلِكَ رَجُلٌ We don't say, هَذَا رَجُلٌ ذَلِكَ رَجُلٌ That is a man. He's part. Okay? So, هَذَا is for something close, and ذَلِكَ for something far. Remember this. Now, Yusuf Estes, he said, Allah said, Dalika, it shows you that this Quran is not here. Look how deviant this man is. Huh? Where is this Quran? He said in the preserved tablet. This is compounded ignorance. Jehel Murakkab. Because Dalika, in the Arabic language, can mean, like for example, Dalika al-Kitab. Why, why, why did Allah say Dalika al-Kitab? He could have said, had al-kitab. Okay, why would Allah say, dalik al-kitab? It's far. But why would he say, dalik al-kitab? <laughs> exactly. This book is far removed. Naam? From any deficiencies. This book is sublime. This book is very lofty. In a very high status, Dalik al Kitab. That's why when you speak about someone so good, you say Dalik al Rajul. You don't say Had al Rajul out of respect to that man. You say Dalik al Rajul. The Arabic language is the most beautiful language. There is no language in the world better than Arabic language. No language in the world 
better than the Arabic language. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he uses the singular, but is intended to be plural. Okay? What are some of the examples in the Quran about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using the singular, but he means plural. Because in, the, in, the, in any language, Spanish, English, Urdu, Hindi, and other than that from the languages, you don't have the singular, and after that, the plural comes. They're going to look at you like, what? You're talking about one person. Why would you be using the plural? But in the Quran, you find this. Okay, can anybody give us an example? Yes. Uh, no, the, 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 yeah, the, it, the plural comes first in the singular form first. So the, the, the word singular comes, and then after that, the plural. It's very interesting. Very interesting. وَالَّذِي جَاءَ بِالصِّدْقِ وَصَدَّقَ بِهِ وَالَّذِي جَاءَ بِالصِّدْقِ وَصَدَّقَ بِهِ Ula'ika after that, he said. Ula'ika. Okay? Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the one who brought the truth and believed in it. Walladi jaa bis sidqi. Okay? And then after that, he said, those are. It's very important. So now, when we have a singular, when we have a singular, and we have Al ism al mawsul. You know al ism al mawsul, right? Al ism al mawsul, relative pronoun. When you say, for example, al ladi, the one, al ladina, for the plural. See? So when you, whenever you have al ism al mawsul, it signifies plurality. Wal ladi jaab al sidqi wa saddaqa bihi. It's not just Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh, because this was revealed in regards to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh. But anyone who fits that criteria will be included. So it is general, and after that, you see the plural. Okay. al ashairah barakallahu fikum, they say Al-Quran huwa al-kalam al-nafsi. Al-kalam al-nafsi, the internal speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You understand? What is the internal speech? Yes, internal speech. Yes. Can anybody give me an example of internal speech? No, like... General. In general. I feel like you talk with Yes, you're talking to yourself. That's called internal speech. Tayyip? Yeah. All right. If someone, for example, had an internal speech to divorce his wife, would that divorce be valid or invalid? No. That is right. If he was talking to himself, should I divorce her or not? Talking to himself from inside. Right? He's not talking, but he's just talking to himself. You know, the inner speech. Tayyip? So now... The reason I'm, 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 I'm trying to clarify this to you so that you will understand the madahib of these innovators. So that you will understand the madahib of this deviant sect. <laughs> Sheikh Al-Azhar himself on YouTube, the interrogator asked him, said, where's the Quran? He said, Quran, al-kalam al-nafsi. Like that. Quran is the, he said, the Quran is the internal speech of Allah. Same belief as Yusuf asked us. Alhamdulillah, that Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they have correct Aqeedah, Alhamdulillah. Al Quran is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is not created. And Allah spoke in reality, not in metaphor. 
because there is a big difference between when you speak with sound and letters and the like and metaphor. You know what metaphor is? In, everybody knows majaz. It's called in Arabic majaz. You have al-haqiqa and you have al-majaz. The literal meaning and the metaphorical meaning. Okay, now can you give me an example of the literal meaning and the metaphorical meaning? Give me an example. Okay, anyone can give me uh, an example? In general or in general? In general. Okay, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm going to give one, inshallah. The word Asad. Asad is lion in the Arabic language. Lion. Okay? Lion, lion, lion. Animal, lion. Lion, yes. So, lion, Asad, in the Arabic language, this is literal meaning, right? So when someone says, رَأَيْتُ أَسَدًا فِي حَدِيقَةِ الْحَيَوَانِ I saw a lion in the, at the zoo. Is this haqiqa or majaz? Haqiqa. Haqiqa. Yeah, okay, now if someone says, I have seen a lion in the battlefield, is this haqiq or majaz? Majaz. Because it's impossible to see a lion, an actual lion holding a sword or, or holding a gun in his hand. Exactly, exactly. It would not be possible. But why would they say, I've seen a lion in the battlefield? Why would they say this? Why would they say this? Okay, so what is the relation between him and the lion? Yes, that's called what? You borrowed, okay, you borrowed. Is that called isti'ara? In Arabic, it's called isti'ara. Say this, isti'ara. Isti'ara. Isti'ara is when you borrow a word from the lion because the lion is brave. Right? He's brave. So you give that bravery to that brave man. And you say, I have seen a lion in the battlefield. Yeah. Understand? This is called majaz and haqiqa. It's very important. Now, the people of Ahl al bidah the people of innovation, they use al majaz a lot. They use metaphor. The people of innovation, they use metaphor. As a matter of fact, Imam al Qayyim, he called metaphor force deity, Tahut. Why would he call metaphor, Ibn al Qayyim, a false deity? Why would he call it a false deity? Anybody knows? False deity, like something that is worshipped beside Allah. Like for example, if someone worship a rat, or the or the or the monkey, or the cow, or worship Buddha, rather than that, he is worshiping what? False deities. Are those deities worthy of being worshipped? No. Taghut. Taghut is anything that is being worshipped beside Allah is taghut. Now, why would Imam al Qayyim? say that metaphor is a false deity. Why would he say that? It's a very interesting question, huh? Why would he say that? You are you're close. Yeah, you are you're close, very close. Anybody else? Ikhwan? 
What happened to you? You, free, you froze up. Okay. I will explain why. The people of innovation, they use metaphor to negate the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Now, for example, the brother, he gave an example to us. Allah said in the Quran that he has hands. His hands that befit his majesty. Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah, they believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hands that befit his majesty. They are not like the hands of his creation. Is that clear? The people of innovation and those who use metaphor, they say no, it doesn't mean hands. It does not mean physical hand. This is metaphor. What it means here, his power, his favors, okay? And so on and so forth. And because of this, they fell into an iyadu billah, going overboard. So al majaz became like a taghut in this case, because they, they got deviated from the path. And that's just an example. There are many examples how they fell into uh, deviation. For example, they said, Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arshi istawa, the most gracious rose of the throne. They said, he conquered the throne. This is, this is what? Majaz. Because Allah did not say he conquered the throne. He said, he rose over the throne in a way that befits his majesty. You see? And this is what? Metaphor. But now, I have a question for you. The ulama, they have differed in regards to is there majaz in the language of the Arab? Is there metaphor in the language of the Arab and the Quran? There are two opinions among the scholars. Some of them, they said there is metaphor and others, they said there is no metaphor in the Quran or the language of the Arab. Amongst those that say this, al Sheikh al Allama Muhammad al Amin Shanqiti, al Sheikh Muhammad bin Salih al Uthaymin, al Sheikh al Allama Salih bin Fuzan al Fuzan, and others. Now, which opinion you think is, is closer to the truth? Which one do you think? Is closer to the truth that the Arabic language and the Quran has metaphor in it or it does not have metaphor in it. It does not have. Anybody else? Does it have or it doesn't have? It does not. You said it does not, right? You said yes. Why did you say yes? You say you should say no. It doesn't. Because yes does not. <laughs> okay. It does not. A reality, it does not. And one of the mashayikh, he gave an example. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran in Surah Yusuf, he said, upon the tongue of the children of Yusuf, when they went back to their father, and they told him the story about how, what happened to them. So they said to him, وَاسْأَلِ الْقَرْيَةَ الَّتِي كُنَّا فِيهَا they said, ask the town that we were at. Is he, is he going to ask the walls of the town or is he going to ask the people of the town? The people of the town. Now, those who say metaphor, they say this is metaphor by way of subtraction. There is something missing there. Okay? What is missing there? Ahl. The people. Because it would be impossible to ask the town, ask who? The walls? You have to ask the people. Right? So these are the ones that say there is metaphor, right? So there is there is there is a missing link there, which is ahl, the people. Like when you say, ask Palm Beach Garden, it, it will tell you what, what, what happened last week. You understand? We even use it here. 
طيب it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna ask the trees the palm trees and لا you're gonna ask the people of Palm Beach Garden now those who say there is no metaphor they say the Arab this is how they speak when they say was Ali al ask the town they mean the people of the town so if that's the case there is no metaphor and uh, this this opinion is stronger and plus this opinion closes the doors for Ahl al bidah because now when you say there is metaphor they're going to fly with it they're going to have a party you know and they're going to start saying you know what uh, this does not mean this there is a metaphorical me- meaning and then they're going to deviate and cause others to deviate. You understand? This is very important affair of Aqeedah. Very important affair of Aqeedah. That Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they affirm what Allah affirmed to himself in the Quran. And what his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, affirmed to him in the Hadith. Without negating those attributes. Ahl Sunnah, they affirm. They say Allah speaks in a way that befits his majesty. The people of innovation, either they negate by saying Allah does not speak, like Al Jamiya. But why? Why do they negate? What, what is their shubha? What is their? What is the doubt that they have? Farid, why do they negate? What's the problem with them? Why do they negate? Why? Why they, they don't want to say Allah speaks? Why do they say Allah does not speak? Okay, ignorance is one of them. What else? That's number one. There's, there's no doubt. Ignorance is number one. Anything else? Why? Anybody knows? Yes. No, no, these are Muslims. These are so called Muslims. But why, why they don't affirm to, uh, what Allah affirmed to himself in the Quran? Why? They don't understand Tawheed. Very good. Jazakallah khair. Anything else? They don't know about Allah. Same thing. Yes, this is the reason why. Because they claim that if we affirm this would necessitate that we're going to liken Allah to his creation. Do you understand? They said, if, we'll, if we say Allah speaks, a human being speak. Do you understand? And we're going to liken Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his creation. Is this true or, 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 or not true? True. True? No. Incorrect. False. False. Exactly. Then what, what, how, how do you prove it to be false? How? How do you prove it to be false? Yes. There is an ayah in the Quran. I want you brothers to give me the ayah in the Quran. What is the ayah to refute them? One ayah, Surah Al-Shura. لَيْسَ كَمِتْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ Remember this ayah. لَيْسَ كَمِتْلِهِ شَيْءٍ There is no, nothing like unto him. وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ And he is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see? In this ayah, the scholars, Sheikh Al-Uthimi, Rahimahullah, Al-Fawzan, and others, they mention that there are two refutations in this ayah. Refutation against who? Al-Mu'attila, those who negate the attribute of Allah. And Al-Mushabbiya, those who liken Allah to his creation. Then where is the refutation? For those who negate in this ayah right here. Where? وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ That he is the all-hearing and all-seeing. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah hears in a way that befits his majesty. And sees in a way that befits his majesty. Okay? لَيْسَ كَمِتْ لِي شَيْءٍ Is a refutation against who? Those who liken Allah to his creation. Because Al-Imam Al-Qayyim, Rahimahullah, will conclude by this. 
I took a lot of your time. Imam al Qayyim, he said, and I want you to unravel this statement of Ibn al Qayyim. I want you to tell me what he means by this statement. Okay. Ibn al Qayyim, he said, Al Mu'attil Ya'budu Adaman. Okay, let's go with this one. Al Mu'attil Ya'budu Adaman. The one who negates the attributes of Allah, he worships non existence. Okay, what does he mean by this? The one who, who negates the attribute of Allah, he does not affirm the attribute of Allah, he worships non-existence. Like al Jamiyyah. Jamiyyah, they say, he does not hear, he does not see, and so on and so forth. So he ne- they negate all the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, what does Imam al-Qayyim means by this statement? al muattilu ya'budu adaman. The one who negates the attribute of Allah, he worships non-existence. What does he mean by that? Okay, the attribute of his creation or the attribute of Allah himself? The attribute of his creation. Wrong. You're close. You have uh, half a right. Half a right. You're very close. The attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Because he said what? He worships non-existence. Because it's impossible to be worshipping the creation. There will be shirk. To worship in the creator. So now, when you say that Allah does not speak, and he does not hear, and he does not rise over the throne, and so on and so forth. You negate all the names and attributes. Do you still have an ilah? You don't have an ilah anymore. That's why he said, Ya'budu Adaman. He worships non existence. And that's why one of the Imams, Hamad, I think, one of the Hamadain, there are two Hamadain, one of them, he said the similitude of Al Jahmiyyah, because they negate the attributes. It's like a man who said, we have a palm tree in our yard. They said to him, describe to us this palm tree. He said, this palm tree does not have a trunk. (laughs) Does not have any branches, does not have any fruits on it, nothing. Then they told him in the end, you don't have a tree. (laughs) You don't have a tree. Because if you say it doesn't have a trunk, how, how is it going to be a, a tree who does not have a, 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 a trunk, a foundation? It doesn't have anything, no branches, nothing. You don't have a tree. So this is the similitude of al jahmiya Because al jahmiya they negate the names and attributes altogether. Altogether. You see? So the Imam al-Qayyim, when he said, Al-Mu'attilu ya'budu adaman. The one who negates the attribute of Allah, he worships non-existence. So the principle would be to negate one of the names and negate all of them. Yes, exactly. Tayyip. Now, he said, Rahimahullah, Wal-Mushabbihu ya'budu sanaman. And the one who likens Allah to his creation, he worships an idol. Why would he say that? Because you create the idol and you yourself are created. Yeah. You are created. No, al-mushabbih is the one who likens Allah to his creation. He likens Allah to his creation. Imam al-Qayyim, he said he worshipped an idol. So the idol is a created thing. Like what idol is he talking about? Any idol that one can imagine. Okay, in this situation, which one? Think about it. What does, what does the one who likens his creation do? Allah to his creation, what does he do? He says, billah, That Allah rose over the throne like a king in this world. Billah, and he speaks like a human. Billah, and so on and so forth. This is kufr. And that's why the ulama, they say, Man Allah bi khalqihi faqad kafar. Whoever likens Allah to his creation, he has disbelieved in Allah. So, the idol that this man is creating is what? It's from his own 
Exactly. So he, he, when he says Allah is like this and that, then he's worshipping. He's worshipping that idol that he himself, you know, created in his mind. So this this idol in his mind, you see, طيب? Is that clear? Anybody has a question? Okay, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all the ilm al nafi' al amal salih. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu sallam ala Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.